Have you ever been to Bremen? Even if you didn't, I'm sure you've heard of it. Probably from the classic story from the Brothers Green, the town musicians of Bremen, first published in 1819. Since I read the story again recently, I was wondering why did the animals decide to go to Bremen? They could go anywhere, right? They could go anywhere in Europe, but they decided to come here. So today we will find out why. And this story starts with an old donkey, his best years behind him, he was no longer strong enough to work for his human master, but he was a smart donkey, so before being put down, he flees, already set to go to Bremen, a place where he could be free and become a town musician. He soon finds an old hunting dog by the road, also too weak to do his work, and convinces him to join him in his way to the city and to become a musician. Not before long, they meet a cat, sitting on a path with a face like three rainy days. He cannot hunt rats anymore and his mistress is about to drown him so he flees and quickly joins the crew. When passing by a farmyard the trio meets a rooster sitting upon the gate dreading for his life because he knew Sunday was coming and with it some visitors so he also knew he was about to become dinner. So the donkey says to him come with us to Bremen something better than that you can find everywhere. But Bremen was however too far to reach in one day so they had to find a place to sleep. After trying to chill by a tree and not finding it very very cozy, they noticed a shimmering light in the distance, a house. Inside the house they had food, it looked very warm and it was being used by robbers of all people. So that's when the crew decided to assume the famous pyramid position and then they sang on the top of their lungs and jumped inside the house through the window. Their hellish cacophony made the men run away in fear for their lives. The animals took that as a win and had a feast. As they slept, the robbers came back and sent one of them just to check how it was the situation inside the house. He tried to get some embers to light the room up but it was the eyes of the cat that scratched him right away. After that he stumbled upon the dog and was bitten right away. And that's when he was hit by the donkey's hooves, how wild the rooster was screaming at the top of his lungs. All this pain and chaos made the robber jump to the conclusion that their house was taken over by a gang of evil beings. An evil witch with long nails, a man with a knife, a monster with a club and a screaming judge. And I want to believe that a judge is the robber's worst enemy. I don't know. So the robbers decided that everything was too messed up and they left and they never came back. So actually the musicians of Bremen never left the house and never came here to Bremen in the first place. It is a fun story with a message of teamwork and never giving up. Like the donkey says to the rooster, something better than that you can find everywhere. But still, why Bremen? Now we are here in the medieval quarters of Bremen, called Schnur, and here we can see buildings going as far back as the 14th century. And everything here reminds us of the past of the city with the sea trading traditions. Even the name, Schnur, refers to the ropes and cables that were produced here centuries ago. It is the only place in Bremen that is still maintains a medieval character even if many of the constructions came much later. It was not very damaged during the Second World War, and after renovation efforts starting in 1959, it became one of the loveliest places to visit when in town. Whenever we visit one of those seafaring cities, I love to have a fish as a snack, because they're usually very fresh, and also I love the remoulade sauce they put on top. So yeah, this is a good feeling. And for dessert, we decided to try this Brema gluten. And apparently, it is a little piece of sugar, a big piece actually, of sugar with peppermint oil and a little bit of chocolate on the outside. Let's try. It's a bit too sweet for my taste, but I think if you try it after a big cup of coffee or something like this, it's gonna be great. St. John's Church is the oldest building in the area, built in the 14th century, when Bremen was already a free imperial city, enjoying a great level of autonomy and influence. They even had their own coin, the Bremen Thaler, that lasted until the German Empire of 1871. 
But back to the Middle Ages, a free city would be the place to be for any tradesman or person wanting to escape any feudal influences, uh, such as serfs. There is even a saying from back in the day, the city air will make it free. So it was a place to look for freedom, even if it didn't always work out as you expect. It makes perfect sense for anyone to look for freedom in a place like Bremen. So that must be why Donkey thought of it so quickly. Today the state is called the Free Hanseatic City State of Bremen and it is the smallest state here in Germany, both in area and in population. And it's really incredible that Bremen has so much autonomy after so many centuries. One of the reasons Bremen has so much autonomy was because of this powerful economic status as a Hanseatic city. The Hanseatic League was a powerful trading organization with cooperation and mergers of merchants for the promotion of the trade abroad and its influence was broad, with city members from Portugal to Russia and routes from Scandinavia Scandinavian countries to Italy. In its heyday, the Hanseatic League was so powerful that it could impose economic blockades against whole kingdoms to enforce their economic interests. We can see classic Hanseatic influences in its architecture, such as the brick Gothic building. The old town hall was built as a Gothic hall structure in the early 15th century and renovated in the so-called Weser Renaissance style in the early 17th century. Being part of the Hanseatic League brought all kinds of imports here to Bremen. There was chocolate, there was coffee, there was tea, things that weren't as common back in the day, right? Speaking of which, there was this merchant of coffee that he was so rich that he just decided to rebuild a whole section of the city. It used to be a medieval section of the city, but he just rebuilt it in this brick style modernist from the 1920s. So it's really interesting to check the street. It is called the Bocherstrasse, and there are all kinds of artisanal and art shops and also gift shops. <laughs> The stone statue of Roland over here was initially erected in 1404 in representation of the rights and privileges of the free imperial city of Bremen. Some even say he is looking directly to the church for a reason. The power struggle between the church and the league was continuous. According to the legend, Bremen will remain free and independent for as long as Roland stands watch over the city. For this reason, it is alleged that a second Roland statue is kept hidden in the town hall's underground vaults, which can be quickly installed as a substitute should the original fall. And when you are in the area, don't forget to take a selfie with the musicians of Bremen right here. It's a statue that was raised in 1953 by a Bauhaus member. And actually, the musicians, they are everywhere, even in the sewers. <laughs> It's incredible how much the story has been retold, adapted and referenced in the media. From a German opera made here in Bremen in 1949, to a Soviet cartoon adaptation, to a Muppets adaptation, an anime was made by the famous Tezuka production and a musical theater was composed in Italian and then adapted to Brazilian Portuguese. There are also multiple statues around the world and references in popular video games such as The Legend of Zelda and also The Witcher 3. So, as legendary as it sounds, Bremen is still a city. Doing its own thing for centuries, but never disconnected from others, close and far apart. All thanks to the River Visitor. And if you like this video, please leave a like, also subscribe to the channel, and until the next one, tschüss!